Anglo-German naval race took place from 1898 to about the start of the First World War in 1914. The years before the opening of the Great War, there were a lot of tensions on the European stage and throughout the world. In the hysteria of new technologies that transformed Western society, along with the continued growth of nationalism, Germany and Britain were two unlikely enemies, but through a steady build of, of distrust, the two nations created a rivalry that would change the course of the 20th century. In 1898, the German Reichstag, the legislative body of the German Empire, passed the first Navy law. The Kaiser, Wilhelm II, had a deep interest in, in the naval power and the great fleet of his uncle, King Edward VII, of the Royal Navy of the British Empire. Germany had been seeking to increase its colonial holdings throughout the world to boost its commerce, both domestic and international, as well as join the several other European nations as world powers with an extensive world empire and strong influences. Kaiser Wilhelm II held the idea that a strong navy would unlock this for his nation, a stronger empire, which, to achieve this, he appointed Admiral Alfred von Tirpitz to take up the battle of creating a German fleet. Two major obstacles were in the way, though. Finding the funds to build such a fleet, and threatening the largest fleet in, in world history, the Royal Navy of the British Empire. The German Navy Law and the series of additions and amendments that followed 1898 were a direct challenge to the Royal Navy. In response, the, the British Parliament passed their own set of Navy laws to increase the size of the fleet to stay one step ahead of their challengers just across the North Sea. This created a rather large hysteria within Britain and heightened the germophobia on the island and within the Empire. As the time went on and the tensions between the two great powers became more apparent, there was an increasing amount of literature written and published suggesting a German invasion of the island and a loss of the British Empire to the rivals. On the British side of the sea, Admiral Jackie Fisher took on the fight to revolutionize and reorganize the British fleet and stand up against any rival. He also pushed for the development of the first dreadnought class of battleships that would set the naval race into a new direction and ultimately and continually give Britain the upper hand on the water. What German leaders and the public failed to realize was how important naval superiority was to British culture and how Britain operated on a daily basis when they decided to make this challenge. Because of Britain's high population and high manufacturing sector, a very large portion of the food is imported to the island. This is important because Britain needed to be able to protect its imports, which fed the nation, and its exports, which brought the nation its wealth. Not only were many government officials dedicated to a superior navy, but so were the majority of the British upper and middle classes. When Germany set the challenge against the Royal Navy, it really challenged the entirety of Britain and her empire. In 1905, the HMS Dreadnought was in the works and becoming the largest steamship ever to hit the water. With its thicker armor, bigger guns, bigger steam engine, this ship would decide who controlled the high seas. This ship was the first of many ships of the superior battleship class. Once launched in 1906, Germany had begun plans to create a ship powerful enough to stand up against the Dreadnought, and soon had her own version of the battleship. It was not long before both nations realized they needed to have more of these ships in their fleet to have a stronger navy than their counterpart. The race was at its highest point as both nations struggled to find the money to pay for these ships, which were not cheap to build nor maintain. These ships required a lot of time, steel, and manpower to build and a large crew to operate them. Germany in particular excessively struggled to pay for the ships. Kaiser Wilhelm II already had the largest army in all of continental Europe, as well as an extensive lead in military technologies. The expenditure did not necessarily have the funds to push, for, push forward in the first Navy law of 1898, let alone second one in 1900, and, if, and the few amendments that followed in 1912. As the desire and the demand by the Kaiser and the Admiral Tirpitz for more ships in the German Navy increased, so did the anxiety within the Reichstag about the financial crisis in which there would be a severe shortage of money, particularly caused by the increase in Navy spending. Britain, although still struggled to find resources to build the, the great ships, was able to have an easier time than Germany in getting the parliamentary support in building up the Navy due to the possibility of detrimental consequences of losing the naval race. By the time 1914 came around and World War I had began, Britain did have more ships than what Germany had, but Germany seemed to have better armored ships with crews that were better trained. It is often argued that Britain came out on top initially because Germany was unable to gain superiority over the water. Although Germans did make advances during the war in underwater naval warfare, 
It was after the naval race between the nations had cooled down and the focus became much more on the general war that was soon to happen.